Man, this game is so great. I wish the people who made this game would make a true successor to the original trilogy. Right, guys? I need to stop talking to myself. This can't be what they came up with. I still need to stop talking to myself. Many of you may recall that in the first episode of the series, I made a comment about wanting to preserve information about some of these titles. Well, there was a game I had displayed that at the time I was only vaguely aware would definitely not need the help. The critical reception of Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 1 seemed to be generally positive, saying that the game was a well done return to form that updates the classic franchise well to the modern age, but also cuts out a lot of the fat. While the fans had other feelings about this new Dimps developed Sonic game, Yes, people felt like it was a garbagey mess that poorly represented what the classic franchise did have to offer. Truthfully, this game's infamy more than likely means it needs no introduction. So instead of trying to keep it in the hearts and minds of my viewers, let's just see if it's really that bad. Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 1, released for digital platforms such as Xbox Live, PSN, and yes, of course, WiiWare in 2010. People were pretty excited about this release, considering that, yes, it was developed by the team behind the Sonic Adventure trilogy. Some good Sonic side-scrolling action. Given enough time and enough budget, they really had the potential to make something wonderful. When the game finally did release, reviewers enjoyed it. But the Sonic fan base was absolutely mortified. Although the game was being released episodically, it really only took about 45 minutes to beat Episode 1. And if you wanted to go for the Chaos Emeralds and really stretch it out, maybe about an hour. In the game's defense, it does get a lot more fun once you get all the Chaos Emeralds and unlock Super Sonic, but actually doing so is still more trouble than it's worth when you could still go ahead and just play one of the older Sonic games and have fun from the get-go. The short four-act experience was supposed to be the first part of a bigger game, but once you consider the major differences in how Episode 1 and 2 feel, act, and even play, you start to wonder if these aren't just smaller games packaged to feel like a bigger experience. Then when you realize the third game was straight up cancelled, it becomes fairly obvious that not even Sega wanted to complete this experience. So, they only did two installments. That really doesn't inherently mean the game is bad though, I mean, for all I know that just means that the second one's bad. I mean, the first one got a sequel, so can it be that bad? That's odd, my classic controller doesn't seem to be working. Oh. Well, here we go. Okay, since the game can only be played with the Wii Remote, NES style, I guess we'll have to make do. The first Sonic games were only playable with a D-pad, so it's really not that big a deal. Whoa, what? <laughs> Wait, what? what the heck? Why is Sonic Startup so slow? I mean, in the original games, he's got a slow startup, but this one's just obnoxious. But that's that's really just a nitpick. It's not that bad, honestly. It's fine, really. Jeez, this song is pretty mad. I mean, even Sonic 06 had some pretty good tunes. Okay. I, oh, um, I guess the homing attack is pretty old now, but I don't remember it being in the classic Sonic games. I thought the whole reason that the homing attack was given to Sonic was to emulate the feeling of playing in 2D. Why would you need to do that when the game is 2D? You can't avoid using it though because it's crucial to some of the platforming, so I guess I'll just get used to it. At least Sonic's main gimmick is still intact, momentum-based gameplay. In the old games, when Sonic picks up speed, it is hard to get him to stop. He is just flying. In the first game, it becomes a sort of puzzle mechanic to figure out how to get enough momentum to climb those steep slopes. I mean, going fast really was just a great reward for knowing the levels and being smart about how you played them. In the new games, this mechanic that really is the core of Sonic games is well accounted for and... Uh... uh um... Uh, <laughs> that's weird. I mean, I heard this game had some odd glitches, but that is... that's pretty stupid. Anyways, Sonic's momentum-based platforming was crucial to feeling real weight in the game world, something I am happy to say Dimps did perfectly, and he's slowing down again. So wait, Sonic is difficult to get moving, 
It stops immediately when you let go of the direction for even a moment? That seems really odd. Sonic is normally going so fast it takes hitting the opposite direction to slow down and even then you skid just a little to show how fast you really were moving and how much your weight really does matter. It also has this weird feature where if you spin dash or roll off of any ledges or up a loop, well, you unroll when you get in the air. So it's dumb because you're now vulnerable to enemies. Bad game design, I guess. The physics are just... wrong. Speed is supposed to be a ward, but now there's just boost panels everywhere as if it's supposed to make up for the fact that the physics in this game are stupid. Whoever made this doesn't understand what made the original Sonic game so fun at all, but Sonic Advance got it. It knew what it was doing. It really felt competent. Now we're just left with broken dreams. Honestly, this isn't the only big problem the game has. It's just the biggest. The music is incredibly mediocre, the level themes are totally rehashed to the point where it feels like you should just go play the original games. The level gimmicks are cute, but largely pointless. Sonic looks weird, and that's not just because I could have optimized my capture card better for component cables on the Wii, but... Wait, look at his feet! Sonic's most crucial animation, his running, looks terrible! The truth is, Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 1 is really not that bad, but it's hopelessly and incredibly mediocre which is not at all what I would consider a good game to follow up such timeless classics. Overall, I give this game a 4 out of 10. Thankfully, Sonic Mania is actually a proper sequel to those good old classics.